So we've looked at a few examples now of integration by parts. I've gone through two relatively basic ones, uh, indefinite integrals uh, in the first video. Then I've looked at um, look doing integration by parts twice. Um, now what happens when we're left with an integral? We've got to use integration by parts because it's a product of functions here, x e to the 3x. I mean, it, it, there are going to be examples where um, it's not necessarily integration by parts that will be used here. Um, but in the case of core 3, it will tell you to use integration by parts. So what happens when we have limits on the integral? We have a definite integral this time. So um, that's going to be our problem because the... Um, formula that we're given in the formula booklet has no limits on it, okay? So we're going to have to make sure that we understand how this is going to work. So it works in the same way. Uh, we're still going to have to find and choose the u and the dv by dx. We're still going to have to find a du by dx and a v, okay? So first of all, we're going to select the u. Um, in all these cases, it's always been this x, because that's the first term that I come across in my late law. So x and dv by dx is going to be e to the 3x. Now, if I differentiate x with respect to x, I get 1. And if I integrate e to the 3x with respect to x, I get 1 third e to the 3x. Okay? So then, it is just a case of plugging it straight in to the formula. Now uv is 1 third x e to the 3x, multiplying these two together. Now I'm going to put that straight into a square bracket because I want to evaluate it between 0 and 2. Okay, And I'm taking away the integral with the limits now on the integral, 0 to 2, of du by dx times v. So that's 1 third e to the 3x dx, okay? So that's what it looks like. The limits are there, okay? We use square brackets because we're using the notation correctly here. So, my suggestion at this point is just to leave this alone for the time being. I'm going to leave that bit alone. It's e to the 3x between 0 and 2. Okay, and then I take away, well, the integral of 1 third e to the 3x is 1 ninth e to the 3x, evaluated between 0 and 2. Okay, now in order to um, make things easier for ourselves, you can now at this stage evaluate both square brackets independently and then combine them. That might cause a few issues with uh, minus signs and the amount of brackets you've got to deal with. So you might want to, at this point, combine the two square brackets. You are perfectly legal to be able to do this. So 1 third x e to the 3x, uh, take away 1 ninth e to the 3x, evaluated between 0 and 2. That is a legal move you're allowed to make. Um, and may well help you and make this easier. So, I'm going to have to open up the first bracket because I'm going to have to put in 2 first. So I've got 1 third times 2, that's 2 thirds e to the 3 times 2, so that's 6. Take away 1 ninth e to the 6. Okay. Take away... Now open the bracket because we're now substituting in the 0. Well, going to be 0 because I've got 1 third times 0 times e to the 0. Take away 1 ninth e to the 0, which is just 1. Okay, so that's just 1 ninth. So what do we have here? We've got 2 thirds take away 1 ninth. Well, that's 6 ninths take away 1 ninth. That's 5 ninths e to the 6. And we've got a take away a minus, so that's plus one ninth. Okay, you could write that then at this point if the question was asking you to write it in a specific format as one ninth five 
e to the 6 plus 1. Okay? And this is in its exact form. <coughs> so, really, the formula doesn't change. Okay, you're still plugging it into the same formula. It's in the formula booklet. It's just make sure that you put in the square brackets because you're going to evaluate it between the limits. And then combine the brackets here at this stage to make sure that you don't have to deal with too many brackets and minus signs right at the end.